Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video series, I'm going to be bringing you all of the information that I know about turbos. And basically, turbocharged cars what you need to know about them, how to care for them, and how to tune them up to their original condition. This is not a uh, let's modify my car to make it faster series. It's a hey, is my turbo charged car working properly type of situation. My 1995 Volvo 850 T5R turbo is a turbocharged vehicle that has a what they call 15G size turbo, which is a high pressure turbo. A high pressure turbo is one that can pressurize the intake system above 9 PSI. If it's pressurizing the system below 9 PSI, and that's what it's designed to do, it's considered a low pressure turbocharger. Now, there's two primary benefits in a car having a turbocharger. Number one, you can have a smaller displacement engine with a large horsepower output. Uh, prime example, it's common for uh, some manufacturers to make a motor uh, 302 cc's or uh, something that size in a V8 or a large six-cylinder engine that produces 250 plus horsepower. Well, in my car, it's a 2.3 liter, which is a 2300 uh, cc motor, which produces the same horsepower and gives the car the same speed as many V8 and large six-cylinder motors. The difference is that power is there on demand and it's not a constant drain on the engine system with size and available horsepower. So this 2.3 liter five cylinder engine is going to be lighter nine times out of 10 than a larger V8 motor. But whenever I want to have the car perform like a V8, all I have to do is hit the gas and my turbocharger will kick in and make up the difference. Another benefit is a smaller motor when cruising around town and not carrying a load and cruising around on the highway will likely get better gas mileage than a larger V8 motor where a lot of vehicles that may have a small V8 motor may get 16 miles a gallon around town and 22 miles a gallon on the highway or 23. My car, even though it's 20 years old, it gets around 21, 22 miles to the gallon around town. And on the freeway, uh, going about 70 miles an hour, it gets 29 or 30 miles per gallon on the highway. So the car is a lot more efficient, mainly because it has a smaller displacement motor that's not uh, producing all of those horsepower all the time. The other benefit in dealing with a car that has a turbocharger is when you're experiencing altitude changes, your car does not lose horsepower like one that does not have a turbocharger. So Let's say, for instance, you buy a car that's rated with 300 horsepower. Well, that horsepower rating is a rating that they give the car at sea level. If you live in a high altitude place like Denver, Colorado, or some other place that has five, six, seven thousand square feet, you lose one and a half percent of your horsepower for every thousand feet of altitude that you climb if your car does not have a turbocharger or a supercharger. So at 5,000 feet, your car may lose 12% of its horsepower. 
So instead of having 300 horsepower, it now has 265 horsepower. Whereas a car that has the horsepower rating, that horsepower rating is going to be the same regardless of the altitude. So if you're in a high altitude situation and your car has a turbocharger, that turbocharger will pressurize for the difference of the thinner air at the high altitude and you'll have the same horsepower and the same general overall power because your car has a turbocharger or a supercharger. Now what you see here is a turbocharger. Now this turbocharger has a exhaust coupling attached to it. So if you disconnect this um, clamp right here, you can separate the main turbocharger from this exhaust coupling. They call it an exhaust flange and this one has an angled flange. Most of them, the flange is straight and the exhaust attaches to it, but when it's angled, it's supposed to mean it has better breathing so that it may uh, produce its power a little quicker and a little easier. Now, what I've set next to the turbocharger is a downpipe. The downpipe takes the hot exhaust away from the turbocharger and sends it down the pipe toward the catalytic converter. And it has a plug for an O2 sensor. Some of them have a plug for an air fuel mix meter. At any rate, your downpipe is designed to get that hot exhaust gases away from your turbocharger. Now, the forward side of the turbocharger, at least I call it the forward side, it attaches to the exhaust manifold. So, when this is bolted on the car, is bolted to the exhaust manifold, that normally totally supports the turbocharger. Then your exhaust is attached to the backside of the exhaust flange. And any time this car is running, and it is producing exhaust gases. Exhaust gases go into that port, into that port, through that hole, and as you can see here, there's a little valve there that's called the wastegate. And as the air goes through that port, it comes around this side, and it comes through that turbine. So at all times, air is coming through that turbine, and that air is spinning the turbocharger. Whether or not you boost in it or not, that turbine is spinning because all the exhaust air is routed through this uh, turbine. As air is going into the exhaust, turning the exhaust side of that turbine, it is also turning the intake side of the turbine. So this side is turning with the exhaust side. And that is what is building pressure. This pressure is air is coming in this way. And as this turns, it's building pressure and blowing that pressure out of the top of the turbo. There is a tube connected here. And that pressurizes the intake air system that allows the car to burn more fuel and air at the same time, which creates a higher horsepower. When you can force air into the intake manifold, it allows you to burn more fuel, and allowing it to burn more fuel and air allows it to produce more horsepower. Now, of course, when you're in boost, when you're forcing that air in there, and it's burning more fuel, it has equivalent fuel economy as a car that produces 280 horsepower on a regular. But when you're not forcing that air in there, not putting that demand, it becomes a more efficient engine. So air is going in the exhaust. It's turning the intake turbine. Air is being forced, sucked into the turbocharger, being forced out of the turbocharger. It goes through some cases, in most cases, a intercooler system that makes sure that this air is not too hot when it goes into the throttle body and into the intake manifold, cools that air down, and allows it to be useful pressurized air. So, just to recap, the reason why turbocharged engines 
produce more horsepower than a non-turbocharged engine, at, even though they're a smaller displacement engine, is it is taking air from the exhaust, pressurizing the intake manifold system, and allowing you to burn uh, more fuel and air at the same time. So an engine the same size as mine that does not have a turbocharger hooked up to it will probably produce around 140 uh, to uh, even as low as a 120 horsepower. When you add a turbocharger to that, and in my case, a high pressure turbocharger, you allow that engine to produce at the stock levels 240 horsepower. Now the next part on this turbo assembly is the wastegate actuator. The wastegate actuator is designed to prevent the turbocharged system from building too much pressure. Whenever the sensors in the computer senses that the system is at its predetermined pressure, like I said, mine is 10.5 PSI, pressure comes in through this tube and pushes on the diaphragm in the wastegate, which pushes on this arm, and this arm opens this wastegate that's inside the exhaust flange. Right there, you can see it wiggling as I pull the arm. And on the inside, where it, it hooks up with the exhaust manifold, it opens up. But of course, it moves a lot more than that. It bleeds off pressure to stop the turbo from spinning too fast from the exhaust gases that is coming off the exhaust manifold through the port where it hits that turbine on this side. So your wastegate actuator is designed to limit the amount of pressure that the turbocharger sends to the throttle body. Okay, I've pulled the pin off of the wastegate actuator and this will allow me to simulate the wastegate actuator opening the wastegate to bleed off air. So that's what it does when there's too much pressure built in the turbo so that your turbo doesn't overboost and deliver too much power to the engine. Let's look at it from this way. So that's an open wastegate bypassing turbo air. That's an open wastegate bypassing exhaust air. And that's a closed wastegate allowing that exhaust air to uh, pressurize the turbo intake system. So that's what the wastegate does. Opens up, bleeds off air. Now as you can see on this turbo, there are a few ports with vacuum hoses attached to, or should I say, uh, pressure lines or whatever. This is the blow-off valve. The blow-off valve line is routed on different places on some cars, but on the Volvo, it's routed back to the intake manifold. This here is a vacuum line or a pressure line that sends pressure to the uh, BCV or the TCV, which is the valve that controls the boost control, the boost pressure. It monitors constant boost pressure on the intake system coming through this port that sends the air to the intake manifold. And this is the uh, wastegate vacuum line that is designed, like I said, it pushes on the diaphragm to open the wastegate, and that goes back to your uh, boost control valve too, or your turbo control valve. So those are the ports coming off of the turbo assembly. One to the wastegate actuator, blow off valve, and then the one that monitors the boost pressure constant. On this side of the turbo, there is what's called a bypass valve. Say you're cruising down the road and you're boosting, you're going up a hill, you're passing cars, and all of a sudden you get to the top of the hill and now you don't need that turbocharger to give you no more power. When you let off the gas, that turbo is still spinning and you no longer are demanding that pressure when you let off the gas, especially all of a sudden, it will cause that turbo to have a extra 
leftover amount of boost pressure which can damage the motor or the tubing if it's allowed to go too high. This inside this little cylinder here is a bypass valve. Whenever you let off the gas all of a sudden, you close off the throttle body. When that throttle body closes, that air needs to go somewhere that has been built up in that intake system. Well, this valve will open, letting air come out of this tube, and that air is directed somewhere else to bypass the turbo pressurized system so that that sudden loss of needed air in the intake doesn't overpressurize the rest of the turbo system. So that's called a bypass valve, which is connected to the turbo. You may not know it, but exhaust gases coming off of a car may exceed 1600 degrees. So the intake system is a cooler air. When it comes off the exhaust, the exhaust may be 900 degrees. And on a turbocharged car, because it's producing a lot more power and blowing a lot more air out the back of it from the power you're producing, the exhaust temperatures may get as high as 1800 degrees. Well, because all that heat is going through this exhaust um, coupling, this is connected over there. So some of that heat is being transferred over to the turbo. That's why it's necessary to cool the air that's coming out of the turbo before it gets into the intake because cool air uh, burns and helps the engine produce better power than hot air does. And two things you need to know about most modern turbochargers is they have an oil in port that oils the turbocharger and helps cool it a little bit and they have a coolant port that helps cool the turbo with the cooling system from the car. So as this thing heats up it may get, I mean if you're boosting and boosting for a long time one time I was towing a trailer going up the mountains. This turbocharger was getting extremely hot. It's pouring oil through there, which is lubricating it and cooling it a little bit. And it also uh, was taking my coolant and running my coolant through there to try to keep the temperature down on this turbocharger so that it doesn't wear out or seize up. So one thing you want to remember when you have a car with a turbocharger is you want to let the car warm up before you get into putting a real demand on a turbocharger because you want the oil to be flowing through there good and you want the coolant to be flowing through there good before you put a high demand on there. And then if you have been putting a high demand on there and you're getting ready to end your journey, you want to let the car idle or drive very passively for the last few minutes to allow the turbocharger to cool down. Because you don't want to be putting a big demand on a car, you get to where you want to go and you shut it off. And this exhaust flange may be 1200, 1300 degrees. And when you shut it off, the coolant in that turbo and the oil in that turbo comes to a screeching halt and gets trapped in that turbo. That stuff could cook in there, crystallize, and the next time you start it, it can be hard for that to lubricate and flush out of there. So, your last couple of miles of driving a turbocharged car, you want to drive it passively, or when you get to your destination, you want to let it idle for at least two minutes so that the coolant in the oil can quickly cool that turbocharger down so that it comes to a temperature where it's not damaging itself while it's off. So another recap. Exhaust air comes through the turbo. It turns the turbine on the exhaust side. It also has a shaft that comes through and turns the turbine on the intake side. The intake air is pressurized and forced out of this tubing exit here. That tube goes probably through an intercooler and then into the throttle body where it's used as useful energy air. Now you have a wastegate actuator that helps relieve pressure off the system and stops the turbo from producing too much pressure. You have a bypass valve that uh, uses to 
let air escape when there's a sudden change in the pressure and you have the monitoring airport there. So there you have it. That's the basic makeup of your modern day turbocharger. And if you look at the links below, you'll see other uh, information about the turbocharger, how they function, what can go wrong, what you need to do to keep it in good working order.